Aha, and there you are, my friendly little fox. Now it is time to capture you and remove you from my safari zone. And prepare to remove this lovely little fox to our temperate forest area. So let's go ahead, line it all up, and... I missed! What do you mean I missed? What do you mean I missed twice? Did I get it the third time? Oh my gosh, what are you? Get in the net! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! And we are currently finishing the clearing out of our beautiful safari zone. It is really a lovely location. We just have to pluck out some of the plants that could potentially be problematic for some of our creatures that we're going to be adding in. Too bad I didn't have any more P words to say just then. That would have been a lovely alliteration. But we are gathering up the last of the cows, the last of the foxes, the very last of the turkeys if I spy any more of those gobble gobbles and we are making this area secure for letting the giraffes the zebras the elephants the gems rock and so many more animals roam around i cannot wait for us to start adding in the ostriches too oh this is gonna be so much fun you guys whoa don't mind that just hit some uh, squibby doo buttons there and let's go ahead and catch this cow there's so many different animals we'll be able to add into the side of the zoo i am very excited especially once we get the jeep tour built inside of here too it's going to be one of the biggest things we have ever tried to do in our zoo before and it's perfect for the big big animals such as the elephant so i'm very excited about that and this tree this tree has two types of wood that is so cool we've got some jungle wood on the bottom and then it has somehow merged with this oak wood this tree grew on top of a little jungle wood tree how cool is that oh, it's the simple things in life sometimes but we really have gathered up almost all of the animals from this side of the safari zone these are the last of the animals that we need to remove before it's safe to let our zoo animals in and I do need to finish securing up the back of the exhibit too I keep forgetting that I need to put the the glass netting that we are using uh, over there as well also I I think I should open up this area a little bit. So watch out, Lily girl. I'm going to clear this area just a bit, open it up so that, oh, watch out, Tate. Oh my gosh. So that it's easier for the elephants to get around. Also, let's catch this guy. Got him. All right. There we go. And then I also have conducted a whole bunch of trades with Farmer Gerald. And we have traded all of our deer away for Jim's Rock. I have Jim's Rock now. Hopefully we'll be able to look at them pretty soon too. But they are waiting for us inside of our safari ranger station. So I just need to finish clearing up the area, securing it, removing the last of the weird plants, dropping off the animals that I have in safari nets, like the turkeys, the deer, and the raccoon, and this fox maybe. Let's see, this cow can go over here this fox can go over here into the appropriate areas so I have my safari nets freed up and I've actually been thinking about what to do with these bunnies and I think I know the perfect person who is very good at taking care of adorable rabbits and we could possibly drop them off at her home and see if she's willing to take them in if not we can totally just release them in our temperate forest area no problem but I think it'd be fun to visit Eros after so long and bring her an adorable little bunny an adorable a little bunny to be able to raise and take care of and hopefully she'd be okay with that she really does love bunnies so maybe that'll work out all right do i have any more empty safari nuts i have a couple good so i can catch this bunny or this bunny this bunny this bunny right here that bunny yeah look at that bunny oh my all right i'm gonna catch this chicken and then i will catch this bunny if i can get it into the safari net i can't remember maybe does it ever go in the safari net no my safari net what have you done, little bunny? Oh my gosh, the safari net. Oh, it's leading me to the safari net. You want to go to Eros's place too, don't you? Lily, Tate... Lily Tate, I know you're trying to help, but you're just going to get yourselves caught. Oh, thank goodness. All right, so the bunny is now securely in the safari net. Wonderful. Let's go ahead. The puppies are going to play in the water for just a second and get something to eat because I'm very hungry. And these heartbeat burgers are so fantastic. Oh, guys, I can't wait for us to get the animals in here so that we can start working on some of the really fun restaurant ideas you guys have. So many people have been saying, Siri, Siri, we should make salads, which I totally didn't expect. You ask a whole bunch of people, hey, what should we build as the thing to eat inside of the safari zone? And I'm thinking like pretzels, cotton candy, all of those junk food things people say they want to eat when they go to the zoo. And you guys are like, we need salad, healthy, delicious leaves. <laughs> I'm so proud of all of you. All right, so we're going to put that away. We do have the apricot bite safari salad that we made a long time ago in a zoo kitchen episode, though. So I could see how 
with such delicious food on the menu, I too would crave nothing but salad bars. And it would be really fun to build a little salad bar, kind of like the ones in Zoo Tycoon 2, too. Giving it little defensing signs like your sign over, oh yeah, T, like your sign over at the Tate and Tackle. Oh gosh, this is going to be fun. All right, but let's see, can I have any other animals? We do have a jaguar now that I have to do something with. And here is our black bear that we need to put away too. But it uses up all of my current safari nuts. So whew, I am really, really tightly packed up when it comes to safari nuts. And while we're down here, we might as well remove some of the geishal greens and we'll gather up. I don't think I have to hit these guys with shears. The pine sap, which are really cool mushrooms, but I just don't think that they belong in the safari zone. So might as well remove these while we're down here. There we are. I think the pitcher plants could stay, but to be honest, they really do seem more like a temperate forest thing. So do I have room for the pitcher plants? I do. So we'll gather up the pitcher plants too. All right, watch out, Tate. Good boy. Good boy, find the pitcher plant. All right, and then, oh, that's a very interesting tree just floating in midair there. All right, I'll walk over here. I see some more geishal greens. It's a lot of work clearing out a gigantic area of, oh, these need to come out. I think the woody bluets can sometimes be... No, it doesn't look like they're poisonous, but I just want to make sure that we don't leave anything in that could be dangerous for our animals. And it is a lot of work to clear the area and make sure that it's safe for the animals over such a large range. I know a lot of my friends who actually do ranching or they have farms in Missouri, it takes them forever to go up and down, up and down, all over the place looking for things that look really innocent, like the beautiful Dutchman's breeches, which are actually a type of flower, believe it or not, are toxic to cattle. And they have to devote a lot of their time to searching and making sure that the, it doesn't get any seeds, no roots of the Dutchman's breeches. And they area where their cattle graze and I kind of feel like that oh here's some trilliums all right let's put some of these plants away but I kind of feel like that's what oh boy it can make the backpack very angry if you try to put it within itself don't do it guys very glad that went so smoothly actually um but yeah you have to really search and make sure that the grounds are clear of anything that could be toxic to your animals and that includes our, our elephants so I'm just going to kind of take the gumption to remove a whole bunch of, let's see, the mushrooms. Those chanterelles are also not poisonous, but you just want to make sure. I wonder if there's anything that's toxic to elephants. That's something you don't really cover when you're looking up cool elephant facts. Nobody really takes the time to sit down and go, and these species happen to be toxic to elephants, so be sure not to let them near. So maybe that's something I'll, I'll have to research in the future. It sounds like something very important if we're going to think about how to deal with like elephants in captivity. All right, let's jump up here. And we are going to be clearing away these little bits of wood. There we go. Wonderful. Oh, just think about what we can add in the toys. It just hit me when we start adding in like all of the elephant swings and toys and things. Oh my gosh, this is going to be awesome. All right, so I might leave the flax. I think it's pretty harmless. Not sure about the pitcher plants. Maybe we'll fill this area in with dirt right here, actually, to make sure that the animals uh, don't escape under the water, but also to make it so that they can get around the perimeter of the watering hole. I think that sounds like a good idea. All right, I think that's a good start. Um, I don't know, the little blue mushrooms might be okay. They're very pretty. And then let's see, maybe remove these bushes. I really wanna clear up the area around the watering hole just to make sure that all of the animals can reach what they're going for pretty easily. There we go. Much better. Wonderful. All right. Oh, and then let's go ahead and get that nice bright mushroom. They just make me nervous. And I guess I need to look up some good pictures of what a watering hole in a jungle-esque area in Africa would kind of look like to get an idea of what kind of plants you could expect around there. I'll grab that berry bush and put it away. But yeah, we'll build a little solid shop. That sounds like it would be a really fun idea. Look at this! Oh my gosh, I'm so proud! We've cleared out so much of this space. I just have to make sure that I put the fencing at the very back. And then I think I'm gonna clear away these bushes down here. Yeah, these bushes, Lily, good girl. And we're gonna drop off our little bear that we have, the, the black bear that we found roaming around. He was actually trying to eat our capybara, I remember now. I think we'll go ahead and we will actually drop him off into the black bear exhibit that we've had built forever. We need to put in some acacia trees to fill in this big open grassland. 
But this looks like it is just ready and waiting for elephants. Oh, and our, our giraffes can start roaming outside of their exhibit after this too. They can be in the big open area and not just uh, like corralled in the giraffe corral. This is going to be fantastic. All right, let's come over. We're going to compost a whole bunch of the things that we don't need, like all of these saplings. Come on inside. Lily and Tate, you have done such a good job. I'm going to put away a whole bunch of the materials that we could potentially use for building and a whole bunch of the plants that we might be able to use. Let's see, this could be a building material. Um, let's see, we do have a bunch of leather. Oh, that's right, we brought the leather so we can make some picture frames. I remember now. Man, that almost escaped me entirely as one of the projects that we were going to work on. But let's go ahead and make some sticks and we're going to make at least one frame, item frame, and we are gonna put within that item frame, oh, look at that, you can make animal glue out of that leather. We're gonna put within that item frame the dead red admiral, which actually is going to be very lovely. I know that sounds really weird, but it's gonna make a very lovely decorative touch inside, look at that, doesn't that look nice? Inside of our ranger station, so there's that. Whew. All right, so what are we working on now? Oh, and then I have a new chest over here, and this is the chest that I have put all of the animals we have traded to Farmer Gerald for. So we now have two certificates for Wilderbeast. He actually needs to work on getting those from his farm, AKA I need the texture for them. I think we may even have one already. And then we have two gems Brock. Oh, or gems Brock. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So these guys look amazing. I kind of want to show you now. Okay, I'm gonna show you now. I'm just, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna show you now. You guys ready for this? This is another one of the creatures that have been added into the Zoo Crafting Discoveries mod. Look at him. Oh, look at his rump. Look at his rump. Oh my gosh, he's so awesome. Hi, buddy. Hi, look at those horns. Look at your mouth. Look at your little feet. He's amazing. This is going to be one of the fantastic African safari animals that we are going to be adding in to the safari zone as soon as it is secured and safe and ready to go. And we're almost there. I am so happy about that. And let's see, I need to exchange this deer for another gems rock and the cow for another wilder beast. The bunny is going to be given away as a gift. The raccoon we can release over in our temperate forest area. Uh, the fox uh, we can release in the temperate forest area as well. The turkeys we're taking to the turkey exhibit, the, the bear we're taking to the black bear exhibit, and the big cat is a jaguar that we are going to be leaving over at our, the, let's see, jungle zone to hopefully be able to make a cool exhibit for it in the future. All right, and let's run by our sheep and gather up their wool so that we can make those tents. We've got a lot of projects going on in the zoo as usual, but I think that things are moving along at a good pace. Moving along, botting along. Unfortunately, the pun just isn't there today. All right, and I've got a bunch of wool. It's a lot harder to gather up wool than I remember. <laughs> it always seems so easy until you like actually need a bunch of wool and then it takes forever. All right, watch out puppies. You guys kind of blend in with the sheep and I don't want to accidentally shear you guys. All right, and then I'll go ahead and put that wool away too. All right, stay here sheep sheep. I'll be back for you later. Keep growing that wool. I definitely need it for a lot of things. Oh, 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 yes. Good timing, little guy. All right, scooch, scooch, scooch. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, it takes a lot longer to gather up wool than I remember. So that may take a little bit to be able to build the tents so that we have a nice little camping area. Oh, hi. Hi, Keeper. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, good, she's doing good. Keeper Ashlyn. All right. Yep, carpenters are here, good. Okay, oh, for just a second I thought she had another task for me and my mind went completely blank with horror of like, what am I going to do now? All right, chickens can go into my home, but you guys, we need to take these turkeys, this raccoon, this fox, and this bear over to the temperate forest area. So Lily, Tate, you two are gonna sit and stay here. Lily, why did you not tell me that you were like starving to death, my dear? There you go, there you go, there you go. All right, and we're gonna pop over to the temperate forest area and finally put a black bear in the black bear exhibit. Dun, dun, dun. All right, to the teleporter and then to the temperate forest area. Oh, there we go. Good. Everything went just fine.
fine. It's always a little bit nerve-wracking to teleport, but we have managed just fine. And look at this, the temperate forest zone. It is so different from working in the safari zone. There's Alia. Oh my goodness. And there's the elven gardener and our wisteria cafe, which is so lovely as usual. And of course, the red wolf exhibit with our fully grown red wolf pups who are ready to go and find their own home somewhere out there in the wild with our red wolf national forest, which hopefully we'll be able to build in the future. And there's a bee! There's a little bee! What? That's so awesome! They can make honey! Get down from there, by the way! We don't need to set a bad example for our zoo, like, zoo visitors! Get down! Fine, be inside of the deer exhibit. And this is our white tail deer exhibit. Oh, man. And there's the goldfinches, and the bee is just flying around. Man, that is so amazing! Just one teleportation, and the next thing you know, it is like a whole new world. Oh. I'm really happy to be here. All right, but we've got things to do, places to go. Let's drop off these turkeys, these little gobble gobbles. Oh, I hear the birds. Oh, you guys are so cute. I can't wait to see the goldfinches again. All right, and this area is kind of empty, but don't be concerned. It is definitely part of the temperate forest zone, and we will be doing a big grand zoo tour. To Why is my turkey escaping? I don't remember agreeing to this. Get back in the exhibit. <laughs> no! Escape turkeys everywhere! Okay, we're gonna put this turkey in here. And then I- Oh my gosh, did that turkey just fly the coop? He just flew the coop! He just flew straight over the coop! The coop he flew! What the heck? What the heck, turkeys? I need to get some- Emergency, like, birch, please? There's a chocobo in my yard? Oh my gosh. Alright, do I have any birch anywhere? I don't. I'm gonna grab this spruce then. Oh my goodness. Maybe I'll grab two spruce and then I can I can exchange it properly. Thank you, spruce. I can't believe my gobblers are just like are just flying the coop like that. You guys, you know better than that. You're gonna you're gonna end up getting eaten and everything. Alright, so I think I need to just put it like right here. And then oh my goodness. Oh, it's because it's only one high! All right, we're gonna have to let the turkeys be convinced that they can't escape by putting them far enough in And I'm going to have to make this a little bit taller. I didn't know that the turkeys could get out if it was only one high All right, and I broke that hedge fence My gosh guys so much going on. Did I lose a gobbler this direction? I did! He's on the run! I'm out of safari nets! <laughs> My fence isn't tall enough. I have escaped turkeys and a pig! <gasps> I have a pig! I can trade that for another wild boar! All right, we're just gonna have to hope my turkeys don't realize that they can get out. And here is the pig. Oh my goodness. I definitely need to come back and extend that fence. I didn't know that they could be able to escape that way. Oh, what chaos. Turkey, that's a chocobo. You're a turkey, stay with your own kind. All right, but this is our wild turkey exhibit. Fun fact, I actually saw a whole bunch of wild turkeys the other day. We were out and about on our camping trip in northern Michigan, and holy moly, that was exciting. We did see a whole bunch of wild turkeys just run on by the road. They were just pecking away, eating in the grass, and just along the side of the highway, and it was really fun. It was the biggest flock of wild turkeys that Chips and I have ever seen, and that was something different. All right, so you guys, stay here. Uh, let me go ahead and run across the, the little bridge. Oh, there's another escaped gobbler! This won't do. I Okay, I've got to get some leaves. Do I have some leaves on me? Not right away. Um, Let me run this way. I'm gonna... Oh, there's another pig. I could trade it for another one of the awesome wild boars that we could get. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay, I'm just gonna frantically like cut the leaves off this tree. Sorry, tree. There we go. And then let's go put them on top of my fence line. And then that should keep the turkeys in. I really have been slacking off in several details for our Zudesia Zoo because there's so many spots where there's just turkeys escaping and tigers escaping. And, and I have guests complaining because they have nowhere to use the restroom or nowhere to stay. That's a temporary gap measure using leaves. Of course I would do that. I think that that's okay. All right, that should contain my gobblers. Whew. It's just not a safe life for gobblers. There could be all sorts of all sorts of things trying to eat them. So hopefully they'll stay this time. All right, you guys, stay here. You're safer here as long as you don't just like flop around in the ground like that. All right, let's try this again. Come on, gobbler. There you go, buddy. All right, bear, fox, raccoon, big cat, bunny, chicken. <sighs> all right, 
I have got the turkey safely put away. The raccoon and the fox I'm actually going to release into the wilds of this area further away because this is a temperate forest area and I don't think a fox could do a lot of damage to the like exhibits I currently have or the natural landscape. And we do have a little wildlife path that we have actually been working on keeping and it's past where we have a whole bunch of uh, the honey hives. I don't know about you guys, but I'm exhausted just trying to keep up with everything. So let me let me just walk you over there and I'll show you. Right over here, we have this amazing honey hive. These are our honey fields where we are trying to gather up as much of the raw honey as possible from our very happy honey bees. They are producing quite a bit of honey. We come in and take care of our queen bees every now and then. Then honey will one day go on to help us create a really awesome sweet shop that we're going to have here in the temperate forest area, which will also promote the importance of how important honey bees are. And this is the building we're going to be building that in. It's really awesome. We actually have an automatic sorting system set up to be able to sort, if I remember correctly, uh, the honey types. So I'll have to show you guys how that works in a little bit. I'd, oh, there's one of the bees running on by. I think it's been a very long time since I've been over here, so I don't think I've ever shown you the work that I've done on this little honey house. But you can take the little bee grub. After the queen bee has died, she will leave behind royal jelly. If you give it to a bee grub, you turn her into a queen bee. Put her back in here and she will begin to produce honey for you again. Come over here and what we can do is we can put in the honeycombs and the wax combs. They will go through the entire sorting system and eventually come out on the other side, sorted into their proper places. I can't exactly remember. I think maybe I have like a presser that's somewhere down there that's actually going to press it straight into honey for me. But it was a very complicated system that took a long time to set up. And I, I yep, there it is. The honey has already been pressed for us just like that. Isn't that a fantastic system? And then this side already has the beeswax. Oh, it's awesome. We'll have to do a very special day where I can show you guys how amazing this honey hive is. But for now, we're working on the safari zone. All right, way too much to do. Very confusing to have so many projects going. My poor little brain. And then way out here is the open temperate forest. And I think here in this wilderness, it is going to be safe to release this little fox. We can come back one day and search for him once more. But I think the little fox will be safe out here. And then over here... I shall release the little raccoon, and the little raccoon should hopefully be safe over here. So that clears us up, puts the animals in a correct biome for them. We still have the chicken and the bunny and the pig to trade and the bear. I almost forgot about the bear, the whole reason we came over here. Are you guys ready? Because I'm so excited. It has been a long time since we have been working on the black bear exhibit, and we finally have the black bear prepared and ready to add in. So let's take the little one over. We'll work our way away from the amazing honey hives and little projects that I need to work on over here. There's a whole bunch of the cotton. <gasps> my little bridge! I forgot about my little bridge! Jeez Louise! You know, four and a half years- Oh, there's another bunny! Should I catch it? It is kind of in the temperate forest area. Maybe I should release its bunny friend, actually. I think we'll save the treats for E-Rose for different things like giant piles of soy cheese for our pizzas that we plan on making with her. And I'll let those bunnies frolic in this area because this is a good area for bunnies to frolic. All right, and then over here, we have the black bear exhibit. It was one of the biggest projects we have worked on yet. We added in so many details. There's goldfinches. We have got all sorts of little bugs running around. There is a tree where the black bear can scratch on the tree and leave behind its marks and like rub up against the tree. We have bird feeders to attract birds to really make the area very cinematic. It's absolutely beautiful. One of the most intensely worked on and detailed exhibits we've done yet. And now, finally, Past this picnic pickup area where there are so many bugs and we're still finishing up our little picnic basket selling spot, we can add in the black bear, the American black bear. I am very excited about this. I have a secret entrance right over here to be able to get into the black bear exhibit. <laughs> we have a lot of places in the zoo we have worked really hard on for so long. And finally, in here, we're going to release the black bear. 
All right, is everything ready? Everything good? Yep, looks good. We've got all of the ferns. We've got some wonderful berry bushes. We've got the like nice little birds all over the place. Tons of goldfinches. Holy moly, they've really moved into the place. We've also got some berries up at the top of this little tree. We've got some uh, little uh, spots where it can dig around and carve its way into the tree. We have some really lovely roots. There's even a spot it can climb up if it chances to and get up here. So it has a little balcony to look out at. I mean, we've really made like the deluxe bear den. All right, and we even have a whole bunch of places where it can eat a whole bunch of nuts. And we were going to add in some more fish so that it can have some fish to be able to hunt while it's down here too. All together, I think it's perfect for you, buddy. So now the question is, what to name the black bear? You guys, we actually have a black bear properly in the black bear exhibit. What the heck? The first thing it does is get in like a deadly fight with a whole bunch of birds. Well, I should have expected that, I suppose. Was it eating the bird? Was it the poor little goldfinch? <laughs> that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> that was not supposed to happen at all. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, and the goldfinch can talk. That's not supposed to happen either. What are you doing, little little black bear? Get over here. Ah, you think making the goldfinches NPCs would have kept them safe, but apparently not. Apparently not. But there we go, you guys. The black bear is tucked away. Ah, he's attacking another one. Um, that wasn't supposed to happen. I feel like a failure as a zookeeper right now. <gasps> I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard. That wasn't supposed to happen. Should I be afraid? Are these goldfinches about to come for me? Okay, maybe it's their exhibit now. I can't believe it just took out that black bear. Oh my gosh. I just, I don't know how I feel right now. You know, the only thing I'm thinking about, why is it every single time I get black bears, they die? This is a legacy that has continued again and again and again. I need a moment to collect myself. I am a bad zookeeper. Here I am, doing my best to be super professional and getting all the exhibits looking nice and keeping things moving at a, at a good pace and then just everything dies. <sighs> at least if it's a black bear. Oh my gosh. Well, this is a little embarrassing. And embarrassing? No, no, now's not the time for pun theory. Now's not the time. All right, um, all right. All right, we don't have a black bear anymore. Thanks, birds. I'm gonna have to make sure that never happens again. Maybe we need to remove the more aggressive species of goldfinch we appear to have snagged and put in a less aggressive species. I have no idea how to even begin to think about the fact that it just killed the black bear, other than the fact that clearly I'm doomed when it comes to black bears, and I, I just don't know how I feel right now. So I'm going to take a moment to collect myself, and then we're going to go. I'm going to just go ahead and remove the last of the animals that are inside of the safari zone, and we're going to celebrate next time by actually adding some animals into the safari zone. There's our beautiful water snake, by the way, because you know what? I think we've earned it. I think we've earned it, even if I'm really, really wondering what to do with these birds now. Wow. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone. Well, waste not, want not, I suppose. <laughs>